Professor Grunig, I know you've had an opportunity to uh, read uh, Mr. Kelly's book and speak with him about this um, from, from your vantage point and from 40 years plus of, of researching public relations and, and strategies therein. Um, what is your overall assessment of the uh, playmaker system? Well, the first time I, I saw this system, um, I said to Alan, where is there a possibility for collaboration? Because this looks to me to be what I've called an asymmetrical approach to communication. Uh, and I've spent most of my life thinking about an alternative, which is a symmetrical approach to communication. And this would go back, I believe, to my graduate school training of approximately 1965, I believe. I took a course from a professor that we'd both mutually taken classes from, Stephen Chafee, and his mentor, uh, Richard Carter, who was uh, at, then at the University of Wisconsin, both were at the University of Wisconsin. Uh, Carter went on to the University of Washington, and he's uh, there and retired also. But there was a distinction between orientation and co-orientation. Carter at the time had written an article in which he essentially said that the concepts of persuasion and attitude were really overrated in the communication field because the whole idea seemed to be is what we do when we communicate is to try to change or influence someone else to think or behave in the way that we would like them to think. And I had grown up in a small town in Iowa that was known for its community uh, with the idea that that communication and public relations in particular is a way in which we build relationships with each other and, and, and uh, engage in dialogue with each other or co-orientation. Whereas orientation is the way one individual uh, orients himself or herself to his environment. Co-orientation is when two or more people get together and try to orient together. So. Basically, I've seen in the playmaker system an asymmetrical form of communication, and I believe very much in a symmetrical form. I asked Alan to think about that for each of his elements in his periodic table of influence. Was there another dimension that we might call symmetrical instead of asymmetrical, in which there are other strategies? that I probably wouldn't call influence strategies. I would call them relationship, I now call them relationship cultivation strategies, in which we are ways of which we can relate to others and build better relationships. Because ultimately, I think public relations is about or an organization's relationships with its publics, hence the term public relations, which I think is an excellent term to describe what we do in this field. Given, given his explanation, uh, Professor Grunig, I mean, do you, do you see value in, in what Mr. Kelly's done in terms of trying to get to the irreducible elements of, of communication, if you will? Well, there are two, two things here that I would respond to. The first is when I looked at the collaborative strategies, they didn't seem to be collaborative to me. As Alan just described it, they're way, a way for him to collaborate with you vis-a-vis -vis me. Okay, so that if there are others who have common objectives with me, how can I put out signals that I would like to collaborate with them? But there is nothing, say, that would allow an organization with an environmental problem who might like to engage in a relationship cultivation strategy I would call uh, networking or, or uh, sharing of tasks, which is you're interested in, in saving the environment. My company is, I probably wouldn't say it, but my company is polluting. Mm -hmm. So how can I work with you to reduce the pollution? As say, McDonald's did when it was confronted by activist groups complaining about the amount of, of uh, styrofoam being used in McDonald's restaurants. So they actually worked with Act environmental groups and replace it with paper and develop recycling programs and so on. So, this to me is not at all captured 
uh -huh. in the ontology because I think it's still designed. How can the organization uh, defend or work toward its self-interest as it thinks is its self-interest? And I'm not always sure everyone knows what his or her self-interest is and the self-interest of the organization is until they talk with others, until they interact with others. So I think that if public relations has a strategic management role in an organization, which I define as using research in to give publics a voice in the decisions that management makes, uh, I think that it's very difficult to follow such a strategy. Um, I would ask, for example, is one of the irreducible elements listening to the other side? And I don't see that one in there. Uh, the other question is the question of ontology. Is this a set of irreducible elements? And I tend to think that that's probably not possible in social sciences because social sciences are different than physical sciences. And the difference is that human beings can invent things, whereas uh, physical elements t uh, typically don't. So I've started a list of relationship cultivation strategies. Uh, for example, one is access. If you want to develop a relationship with someone, you have to give them access to, mm -hmm. to you. Another one is openness uh, and disclosure, that if I want to have a good relationship with my spouse, I should, must be able to disclose what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, the same way with an organization. And so we started w with a list of, I think, about seven or eight relationship cultivation strategies taken from interpersonal communication. And then my students started doing research with those strategies, and they discovered more. Um, being unconditionally constructive, for example. So I think that human beings are going to consistently invent new strategies. And we can continue to list them, but I don't think I would argue that we've listed everything that's possible. Gotcha.